In this video we're going to look at placing the camera in a suitable location um, because if we have a look in the embedded player we can see that the game works perfectly well and we get a good overview. However, we need to publish our game so that other people can play it and for that we get a better idea of what's happening if we use the standalone player. So if I press start just move this out of the way and have a look at this one here. You can see that although it's working, the camera is in a rather unfortunate location. So we'd be essentially looking at the character's feet, so that's no good. Um, so, we've got a few options. Uh, if we select the camera, uh, and also go down to view and choose toggle quad view you can see that the shortcut is control alt and q and we'll click that and we get our four views here one of which is camera if you haven't got the camera perspective you can go to view and camera there we go uh, and this shows us what we'll see actually when the game is being played. Uh, so the first thing that we could do is simply place the camera in a useful location where we can see the whole of the game and for that we can use a combination of rotating there you go rotation and uh, movement. So I'm using the scroll wheel just to zoom out here and get a good view of the whole lot. Um, not ideal, we could come a little bit closer here and try and use the focal distance of the camera which is found over here under the little camera icon and we can change the focal length so we can essentially zoom out but as you can see it starts to distort what we're looking at so for that reason you need to get a balance between the focal length and the actual viewing angle so uh, I'll just spend a moment trying to get that looking reasonably good come up a bit here the focal length back to uh, 35 and then use rotation in one direction in one direction and So, for example, that could be our game view. Um, not ideal, but you can spend longer getting it just right if this is the sort of thing you want to use. Um, okay, so now we can see that when we click on our little camera icon and try it in the standalone player, you don't always quite get what the camera looks at. And as you can see, it's a very dark game at the moment, so we can do with adjusting the lights. But generally speaking, we've got an overview now of what's going on, so conceivably someone could play the game like this. Or fail miserably like that. However, there are probably other views that might be a bit more useful, especially if you're playing as a character in a game. Uh, for this I'm going to delete the existing camera so I'll right click it and press X and choose delete and uh, first off let's have a go at adjusting our light so we're getting a little bit more of a view when we are in the game so I'm going to lift that up as well as move it along and over here on the uh, 
light data or light properties I can change the distance to a larger value and hopefully get a bit of a brighter gain. Um, you can always test that by playing, play, pressing the, the standalone player. Or not, because we don't have a camera in it. Let's put the camera in it first. Um, so we go add camera. Now the advantage of that, removing the existing camera and adding a new camera is that this camera is aligned to the grid and isn't already sort of at a funny angle. Um, so we're quite far away here, so what I'm going to do first is we're going to look at a way that the camera can be positioned in one location. And I'm just going to use rotate now in this axis to bring that round. And then change this view by pressing view, uh, camera, uh, camera, so that we can see our view here. And again, we can try changing the focal length so it's not too distorted, uh, and also changing the position of the camera. Now I've put it somewhere vaguely in the middle. I'm going to move it a little bit over to the right, we'll see why shortly, so we can see the main bit of the play area. Now, what we're going to make this camera do is track the player. So the camera will move from side to side as we're playing, as the player is moving it will, it will follow it around. So, in the logic operators, in the logic bricks, down here we're going to add a sensor and it will be always, because we want it to always do it, and over here on the right hand side we're just going to add a it, edit object and instead of add object we're going to go to track 2 and the object we want to track to is the player and we'll link them up like that it will automatically put the and in for us and we should see now when we go to the render menu and click standalone player and click start with any luck ok we can see that, it's not quite what our camera view is seeing in there but as I move the player now the player is able to disappear off the camera in this instance so that's not much use well it could be useful but in this instance it's not much use. What we need to do is just check this 3D option and hopefully that should then I'm going to bring it back just a small amount here there we go. and click start again and this time I can actually pick this oh dear let's have another go so click start Bridge is down. As you can see, we come back. The camera actually allows for that player to come much closer, and so you've got a much better chance of actually being successful. Hooray! So that's having the camera track the player. Okay. Uh, I'm going to remove this. Now, one advantage when we're testing might well be to give some of these objects uh, some basic colours before we go ahead and touch to them. So I'm just going to right click on one of them, I'm going to go to edit mode down here and over here on the right click the materials and click new. Uh, I'm just going to change the floor to a uh, green colour and then that's just called material 001 uh, let's call it floor mat and here I'm going to right click oh, go back into object mode right click on the other bit of floor 
and in the materials we can choose floor mat. Here on the drawbridge I'll make that a different colour. Uh, this one can be a sort of orangey, pinky, there we go, that'll do. Uh, player, I'll leave the player as it, oh, I'll make it. Make the player blue. Just so we can see all these different parts easily in the light. Uh, and I'll click on the, the object that we're collecting, and I'll give that another new material, so I'll just change the colour down there. Something there. Uh, Treasure like, Ooh, lovely and golden. There we go. Okay. So now, when we click the standalone player, hopefully we should get a little bit, bit of a better view of what's going on. Hey. As you can see, I've deleted that tracking behaviour, so that's no longer happening. Okay, the second option is to go for a sort of uh, what's called parenting. This is where we attach the position of the camera, wherever it may have gone, over here, to the position of the player. And this can give us a couple of more familiar views. The first one being the third person view. So what I'm going to do, I need to know which direction is forwards for my player. Now I know that this direction is forwards, that this face that we can't see is the front. So I'm going to position the camera somewhere down here, like that. I'm going to kind of overcompensate, I think, really, for the, the fact that the camera always shows us a little bit less than what we get. I'm going to go with something like that. Um, Although saying that, what happens as soon as we click the object, so we've selected the camera, we click the object mode here, and we want to parent it to the player, and you'll see the camera just immediately move. There we go. So that's that's very useful. Um, change the focal length back to 35, so we get a bit less of a distorted view. And I'm going to come back a bit and down a bit. So I'm using these different viewports to position the camera in the place that I want it. Ooh, a bit haywire there. Undo that. Come on, there we go. And still back a little bit. And again. something like that maybe. Now your third person might be a bit uh, of a different mode, you might just want their head and shoulders in it or whatever. Uh, but again we can change the focal length to get a, a wider angle and then perhaps get a little bit closer to the, to the player. Okay I'm going to go with something like that. Um, now that it is parented to the player, when we move the player the camera will move with it. Uh, but for that reason, we should use, in the camera settings, the focus to make sure we focus on the player. Also, over here in Object Properties, where we selected Parent, we may choose to use, uh, in this Relations Extras drop-down menu, we might choose to use Slow Parent. Okay. Um, if we now go to render and have a look at the standalone player, that beautiful music to start. There we go. Now we get much more of a sense that we are in the game. Hooray! And finally, we can do uh, the first person view and for that I'm just going to zoom in on the top here and I'm going to position the camera pretty much on top of there we go, and just in the right view move that down a little bit so it's quite close but 
be aware that if you get too close you'll see the top of it and certainly if you go too far you will be inside the cube so position the camera in a sensible location so something like that I think is going to be fine uh, have a little look in the camera menu and see if we can get okay I'm going to do something like that and um, we'll have another go See if we jump as well, there we go. Oh, I well, failed miserably again. Okay, so three different, four different places really to put the camera. Uh, and of course with the parenting you can have whatever position you like. Um, and the camera will follow the player. For example, if you're doing a Grand Theft Auto style game, the camera is always positioned sort of 45 degrees-ish uh, above the player. Um, first person shooters like this and you get third person games of course where you can see the back of the character and they're going around uh, and you're, you're following them as well um, don't forget to test it make sure that it's it looks correct and then you can always come back and just sort of tweak that camera um, okay that's it for now